Hi, my name is Joe Ensley, and today we are going to talk about the controversial prayer put out by Emmanuel Cleaver, where he ended it saying, Amen and a women. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that like button, followed by the subscribe button, followed by the notification bell, so you can get more content as it comes out. So first of all, we have to talk about the actual event. Emmanuel Cleaver goes up and decides to end his prayer like this. We ask it in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma, and God known by many names, by many different faiths. A man and a woman. Now there's a couple things everyone's taking issue with. Now the first one is that he says a men and a women. That's kind of new. We haven't heard that before. It's not typical. So we're going to talk about that. But we actually have to back up just a little bit if we're going to look at this prayer. He says the monotheistic God Brahma, who is known by many other names in other religions. And that's actually where you should be focusing. A lot of people are distracted about the gender neutral hoopla that happens at the end. And we'll talk about that. But the real issue you got to back up to is a couple of other things that everyone seems to be missing. First of all, do you know who Brahma is? Brahma is like the top god in the Hindu religion, and he's actually a crazy son of a gun. If you've ever looked him up, look up the reasons why they say he has five heads. This god is really kind of a crazy story, but Brahma is a Hindu god. Hindu is a pantheistic religion. What does pantheistic mean? Pan meaning many, theistic meaning God. Many, many gods. Hinduism is known for lots of gods in their religion. There's lots of pantheistic religions in this world, but Hinduism is one of the top ones. So when he says the monotheistic God Brahma, monotheistic meaning one God, and he says the one God of a religion that is actually about many gods, first of all, we have to say that Cleaver doesn't even know what he's talking about when it comes to the Hindus. Brahma is not a monotheistic God, and everybody seems to be missing that. He goes on to say that this God is known by many other names and many other religions. Now this is a heresy that was very common in the early church in the New Testament. It's something that's come around a lot of times, so we're pretty good at dealing with this argument at this time. But before I get into anything crazy, I want you to notice the first thing Emmanuel Cleaver does that we have to notice. He creates unity where there is no unity. He creates unity where there is division, where unity does not exist. To back this up, I'd like you to take you to Isaiah chapter 44. And God says this through the prophet Isaiah. This is what the Lord, the King of Israel and its Redeemer, the Lord of armies says, I am the first and I am the last. There is no God but me. So first of all, the God of the Bible claims exclusivity. He says, I am the only God. But then for those of you that aren't Christians and you're watching this video and trying to figure out what's going on, I'm going to take you over to the five pillars of Islam. What are the five pillars of Islam? First is a declaration of faith. What do you declare in that declaration of faith? That there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. Now here's where it starts getting interesting because I've got the God of the Bible and he says, I'm the only God. And I've got Allah, the God of the Muslims, and he says, I'm the only God. And now we're like, okay, we can fix this dilemma. Maybe they're just calling the same God different names and there's just a little bit of confusion. Problem is, if Allah is the only God and Muhammad is his prophet, then we have a problem in John 14, chapter 6, when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. So the Muslims claim their God is the only God and Muhammad is his prophet and Jesus is just a teacher. But then the God of the Bible claims he's the only God and Jesus is his son. He's part of the Trinity and he's the only way to the Father. So at the very least, there are multiple religions with gods claiming exclusivity. I said drop. So first, we have Emmanuel Cleaver creating unity where there's actually division, trying to gloss over something and using the wrong terms, claiming that Brahma is a monotheistic god when he's a pantheistic one, and saying that maybe there's just one god and we all call him by different names when the god of the Bible clearly says Brahma's not god, Allah says Brahma and God aren't God, it's just Allah, and so we actually have, most religions have an exclusivity when it comes to their God. Now, I'm a Christian pastor, and so where I come at this, I attack it from the Bible, and so I take one more issue with Emmanuel Cleaver's prayer. We know it's silly to say amen or a, a women. Amen comes from the Hebrew word saying, so be it. 
let it be so. So this is just a way to close our prayer. It's a Hebrew word. It has no gender connotation whatsoever, which leads me to my next point, that not only does Emmanuel Cleaver create unity where there's division or try to portray unity where there is division, but he creates division where there is unity. There is no problem with saying, amen, that's right, so be it. It's not a gender thing. It's saying, I agree. That's a great prayer. I'm praying it with you. And so what Emmanuel Cleavers did was create division where there is unity. There's unity in men and women saying amen together without bringing gender into the issue. And so actually, when we close a prayer, we know we don't pray to a God named Brahma who might be called all different kinds of names. The Bible gives us a very clear picture. In Jeremiah 29, God speaks to his people through the prophet to say, you will call to me and come to me and I will listen to you. So God of the Bible tells us, you pray to me. That's who you pray to. Not Brahma, not Allah, not Buddha, not anyone else. You pray to me. But then we continue on in our Bibles to learn. In Jude 20, we're told we have to pray in the Holy Spirit. So not only are we told that we're praying to God, we're praying in the Holy Spirit. But how do we pray in the Holy Spirit? Oh, friends, that's after we've been born again. After we've repented from our sins, we follow Jesus Christ, and we understand the 2 Timothy 2 passage that says there's one mediator between God and man, Christ Jesus. Man had a sin problem. We're separated from God, and then to come back in to relationship with God, we have to take the free gift of eternal life, accept Christ's righteousness instead of our sinfulness, because Christ took the penalty of our sin on himself, gave us his righteousness, now we have fellowship with God. So an actual Christian prayer goes like this, to God, only to God, in the power of the Holy Spirit, by the name of Jesus. Any other prayer is not a legitimate prayer to a God who can actually do anything. Sure, you can mumble whatever you want to Brahma. You can mislabel him all you want. And the good thing is, Brahma doesn't exist. So he's not going to be able to tear you up for messing up his prayers. But the God of the Bible is very specific. He says, pray to me in the spirit by the name of Jesus. And that's how God will be able to listen to us and answer our prayers. So the moral of the story is, friends, don't go about trying to pretend there's unity when there's division. But worse of all, don't create division where there actually is unity. So Emmanuel Cleavers, thank you for showing us how not to pray in public. Everybody else, let's pray from our hearts genuinely to the Father, just like Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer.